Hey guys, welcome to On Fire Roblox Scripting, and today's video is brought to you by Playful Gamer. Um, so basically, he's asking me if I can do a tutorial where if a player enters a seat, then a GUI will pop up where you can click and it will eject you out of the seat. So let's just get right into it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go under the view tab and open up the explorer and properties. And now we need like a seat to eject the player from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the home tab over here, click on toolbox, and then I'm just going to find a nice Jeep. Um, this will work for our tutorial uh, because inside the Jeep, if we open it up, we do have a seat. Just make sure that you have a seat for this tutorial to work. So once you have a seat that we can work with, just go under the seat, click the plus and enter in a proximity prompt. So this proximity prompt is going to allow us to get into the seat in the first place. I already have a tutorial on this, um, but I'm just going to quickly redo it right now. Um, but basically, uh, we can go into the properties of this proximity prompt. We can change different things like the action text. We can change to um, get in. We can change uh, the hold duration to something like one, which will represent the amount of seconds that we need to hold the proximity prompt. And I'm probably going to change the activation distance to 20. And I'm going to uncheck requires line of sight. It doesn't really matter what your properties are. Um, like I'm also just probably going to add in seat as the object text. Uh, but once you're done with the properties, we can go back under the proximity prompt, click the plus and enter in a regular script. And then we're just going to leave the script there for now. And what you want to do now is scroll all the way down under the explore until you find the replicate storage, click the plus and then enter in a remote event. And then let's rename this remote event to something like eject. After that, we can now come back to the script that we inserted. So just delete the first line and you can now write what I write. So I'm going to start off with some variables. So local prox equals to script.parent. So that is the script's parent, which is our proximity prompt. And then local seat equals to proximity prompt dot parent. And then we're going to write local eject equals to game dot replicated storage colon wait for child and then put in quotation marks and then write eject. Um, if you named your remote event to something other than eject, then just make sure that what's ever inside the quotation marks matches with your name. After that, we can now go down to lines and then write seat colon get property change signal and then put in quotation marks and then write occupant and then go outside the brackets put in a colon and write connect function and put in brackets and then go down a line and then write if seat dot occupant then and then go down a line write prox dot enabled equals to false and then go down a line and then write else and then go down a line and then write prox dot enabled equals to true and then go down a line and then write seat dot disabled equals to true so what this means is basically when the seat is changed which means someone is sitting on it or not sitting on it um, if seat dot occupant so if someone is sitting on it then we'll disable the proximity prompt um, in any other scenario so if no one's on the seat then we'll make sure that the proximity prompt is enabled and we'll also make sure that the seat is disabled so that you can't just jump right onto the seat and hop on it. Okay, so after that, we can go down two lines and then write procs.triggered colon connect function, put in brackets and then write in player and then go down a line and then write local hum, which we're going to represent the humanoid equals to player dot character on wait for child and then put in quotation marks and then write humanoid with a capital H after that go down the line and then write seat dot disabled equals to false and then go down the line and then write seat colon sit and then inside the brackets write hum and then go down the line and then write hum dot jump power so make sure that the J and P here are capitalized equals to zero and then go down a line and then write eject colon fire client and inside the brackets write player. So 
what we've done here is when we detect that the proximity prompt is triggered, we're going to get the humanoid from our past parameter player. We're going to make sure that the player can sit on the seat and then we're going to sit the player on the seat. We'll also disable their jump power by setting it to zero so they can't jump out. And then we're also going to fire a remote event, which we're going to script now. So this is what your first script that's under the seat should look like. So now we're going to go back to our studio over here. And now we need to make like a button um, for the player to eject the seat out of. So to do that, go back to your explorer, scroll down until you find the starter GUI, click the plus, enter in a screen GUI. And under that, click the plus and enter in a text button. And we can rename this one to something like um, eject. It doesn't really matter what you name it. Um, but when you enter that, you should see a text button on your screen. So what you want to do is just put it somewhere where um, you know the player can easily access it. So I'm probably just going to put it um, somewhere on the left side of the screen, just like that. And now you can like customize it however you want by going to like the properties of it. Um, you can do stuff like change uh, the background. It's going to make it like some kind of gray. You can go all the way down to the text over here. Uh, change the text to eject. And then you can do something like text scaled so it fits the entire text box. And I'm probably just going to change the text color to like white. And I'll probably also just make it bold. Uh, it doesn't really matter how your button looks like. It just needs to be a button that the player can click on. So once you have your button done, go back to your button under the Explorer, click the plus and enter in a local script. And now you can write what I write. So local player equals to game dot players dot local player and then go down line and write local hum equals to player dot character colon wait for child put in quotation marks and then write humanoid and make sure once again that the H is capitalized. After that, go down a line and then we're going to go back to our first script and then the, the line with the remote event. We're just going to copy that one and then go back here and just paste it in because we're going to be using the same remote event. After that, go down two lines and then write eject dot on client event colon connect function put in brackets go out one and then go down a line and then write script dot parent dot visible equals to true and then after that we're going to go down two lines and then we're going to write script dot parent dot mouse button one click colon connect function and put in brackets and then go down a line and then write hum dot sit equals to false and then go down another line and then write script dot parent dot visible equals to false and then go down a line and then write eject uh, colon fire server and then write in player so this should be uh, the entire local script so what we've done here is we gathered some variables then when our remote event is fired um, we will make sure that the button appears and if they click on it, we will unsit them. We'll make the button like invisible again. And then we'll refire the remote event uh, back to the server. So one last thing that we have to do is go back to our server script over here. And then uh, just under all of these lines, just go down two lines and then write eject dot on server event colon connect function, put in brackets and inside the brackets, write player and go one out, go down line. And then we're going to go back um, over here. We're just going to copy this exact humanoid line because we need to get the humanoid again. However, this time we're just going to write hum dot jump power. So once again, make sure that the J and P here are capitalized. And then we're going to write equals to 50 uh, because 50 is the default jump power. And one more thing before we go test it out, just go back to your button under the explorer and scroll all the way down until you find the visible box and just uncheck that so that inside the game, um, you'll see that our button is now gone. So with that out of the way, let's go test it out. So here I am inside the game. If I get close to the car, the proximity prompt will appear with our action and object text. 
If I hold it, I'll be put inside the car and I can now drive it. You'll also notice that the button has appeared on the left side of the screen where I originally put it. Uh, if I click on the button, I'll be ejected from the seat and uh, I'll gain my jump power back. The reason we can't go into the seat just by walking on it is because we have disabled the seat when there's no one in it, which means the only way we can get in is by using the proximity prompt. So yeah, that'll be it for this tutorial. If it helped you, if you liked it, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.